Hi, in this example we're going to take a look at comparing a 30-year fixed loan and a 15-year fixed loan and we're going to keep the uh, principal balance the same so the loan amount is going to be 200000 for each loan and the interest rate is going to be kept the same between the two and both of these would be uh, compounded monthly and the, the payments would be monthly also. Now the reason we're keeping both uh, the uh, value of the loan and the interest rate uh, the same is we want to just see in general what is the payment difference between a 30-year and a 15-year fixed loan. Uh, for instance, if I cut the years in half, does that mean I'm going to cut my payment in half? Is there a, rela a direct relation that way? Is something we could probably try to observe. Uh, without further exploration, there won't be a whole lot we could say other than we won't notice a, a direct cut in ha the, the payments in half to go twice as long as a 15 year. You'd expect to pay more for the 15 year to get the loan paid off faster. Now below what we have is the uh, fixed payment formula and so PMT here just represents the uh, fixed payment that you're going to be making for the next 30 or 15 years. P, that's actually the loan value. And so for each of these scenarios, we're just going to evaluate this formula. And R here is the annual rate, N is the compounding period, and T is for the years. So let's take a look at our 30 year fixed. In this situation, well, we know what T is right off the bat, that's 30 years. We're compounding monthly, so n is equal to 12. The annual rate that we're given was 5%, so we convert that to a decimal and say r is 0 0.05. And then that principal is the $200,000 loan that we're taking out. So my payment, my payment here is going to be the output from this formula. So we're going to put in the 200,000 times R over N and so that's really the interest rate per period so that 0 0.05 over 12 and in the denominator this bracket's very important when you get to using your calculator so I'm going to put this bracket here. I have 1 minus the quantity 1 plus R over N so I'm going to put 0 0.05 over 12 and then this is going to raise the power of negative nt so one of the things I'm going to do is put in the parentheses on that exponent and we can say negative 12 times 30 and then close the bracket for the denominator so now all we're left with is evaluating this into a calculator and that can be very easily to get um, wrong if you don't have the parentheses in the right places so that the order of operations work correctly. So on the calculator we're going to plug in our result and depending on your type of calculator you may have to figure out how to get that negative up here in the exponent. Um, with this calculator, the uh, symbol here will negate something, but I'm going to show you uh, another trick to get that uh, negative 12 times 30 inside of there when we get to that step. So let's take our 200,000 and we're going to multiply it by this fraction. And just to keep my work looking nice, I'm going to include that parenthesis, although it wouldn't be required for the order of operations here to work on the calculator correctly. Uh, but the brackets are going to be important when we do the denominator. They are required here so that we keep the entire expression here in the denominator. So I'm dividing by in parentheses 1 minus and then in parentheses again my base so my parentheses uh, 1 plus 0 0.05 divided by 12 I'm closing the base and now I'm raising a power. So how am I going to get negative 12 times 30? And well we can think of negative uh, 12 times 30, this is actually the same as saying 0 minus the product 12 times 30. And so that's what I'm going to use on my calculator here is that I'm raising it to a power so in my parentheses here I'm going to take 0 minus 12 times 30. 
close that parenthesis for the exponent and now I need to close the parenthesis for the denominator and when I hit equals I've got my fixed monthly payment for this uh, 30 year loan at 5% and so that's 1073.64 and so my payment here, just to put it back in the, the same color, 1073.64. Now of course that doesn't include things that are realistic for a loan, like your taxes and any insurance that are typically put in an escrow when you get a loan from a bank. So this is just literally the value for paying the actual loan amount, not actually the other payments that come along with owning a house. Now for the 15 year case, we're going to do a very similar scenario, but the only thing that's going to change in all of this is when we had t equal to 30, that's now going to be t equals to 15. And we're going to take a look at what happens to my payments. So my setup here for the 15 year, so I have a 15 year fixed, t is going to be 15 and everything else stays the same. And just remember when you're typically comparing loans the interest rates would actually change between the 30 and fixed uh, 15 year and so that would change your your general structure. Right now we just want to compare it at that 5% rate like I mentioned before. So my payment for that 15 year is going to be 200,000 times that 0 0.05 over 12 divided by, and then in brackets, 1 minus my parenthesis, 1 plus 0 0.05 over 12. And this time the exponent will be a negative 12 times 15. And then close my bracket here. So using the calculator again, we can go through that entire process. And just remember, the most important thing here is that you keep the parentheses around the terms. And this one is the one that causes the most problems for students uh, when I've looked at the work in the past. So we have in here 200,000 and in brackets my 0 0.05 divided by 12. Closing the brackets for the numerator, so I'm dividing everything the denominator needs to go into parentheses, so that's what the brackets here are. 1 minus the base in parentheses, 1 plus 0 0.05 divided by 12. That base is being raised to a power, and like I did last time, uh, the trick I'm doing for this calculator is I'm saying, well, this is 0 minus 12 times 15. Closing the exponent, so I've closed the exponent, closing the denominator, now I can hit equals to, and it says my payments are $1,581 and round it up to 59 cents. So we have 1581 and 59 cents. So what we see is that by going from a 15 to a 30 year, I double the length of the loan period. It doesn't half the loan payment. It's more of a, a third of the, um, the payments you're making is taken off to extend your loan twice as long. But what's going to happen is if you do extend it over a longer period, you're, you're going to end up paying more interest for that 200000 you borrowed. So how much are we actually paying is, is one of those questions. So there's a few things we wanted to answer. What is the difference in monthly payments? Well, we see just from an eyeball, it's about a $500 difference. So if we want the actual difference, so here is our, our work for that. The difference in the payments is the fifteen hundred sorry the one thousand five hundred eighty one point fifty nine minus my one thousand seventy three point sixty four and since they're rounded I'm just saying that we got an approximate here so I'm going to subtract off 
1073.64 and like I said it's close to 500 it's $507.95 roughly so if you're comparing uh, the two loan products and those were your choices and you can swing an extra $500 every month that might be more beneficial to you as that you're going to be paying less interest over the life of the loan but how much less are you actually paying so for each of those the the products so I'm gonna look at my 30 year interest and compare that to my 15 year interest so to get the uh, amount of interest that you actually paid what we're gonna look at is the uh, sum of all the payments and we're going to take off the loan value, which was $200,000. That difference would be all the extra money that was paid on interest for that uh, $200,000 we borrowed. So the sum of all the payments, well, how many payments did we make for a 30 year? Well, I have 12 months in a year, and I'm doing it for 30 years. So this is the number of payments. and then each one of those was one thousand and seventy three dollars and sixty four cents and the loan value was two hundred thousand so remember the twelve times thirty here is just telling me the number of payments I made so let's calculate that and then we'll take that difference so we have twelve times thirty times that 1,073.64 and if you want the pennies in there you can but it really is going to make much difference in the comparison so when we take the difference here well we're just subtracting 200,000 we know that's going to be uh, hundred and eighty six thousand five hundred ten dollars and forty cents and again that's the interest on my 30 year it's almost the same value of the loan that we took out we're paying as much on interest as what we borrowed from the bank now if I look at my 30 year interest so kind of separate my work here. When I look at the 30 year interest, and I should be saying here 15 year interest, we just did the, the 30 year interest. So the 15 year interest, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to take the uh, sum of the payments minus the loan value. this time I'm only doing it for 15 years so 12 times 15 is my number of payments and the payments themselves were 1581.59 so I'm gonna put this into the calculator we see that the sum of all the payments is going to be 284,000 and what was the the rest there 686 and so my total interest paid is eighty four thousand six hundred eighty six dollars and twenty cents I mean just looking at these directly you see such a large difference It's a difference of a hundred thousand dollars for the extra fifteen years of making those payments um, so that five hundred dollar difference for that uh, fifteen years is kind of worth it when you look at how much money you're going to be saving when you compare the total interest you're paying on the two loans but then again that's dependent on how much disposable income you have and so a lot of people can't uh, pay a very large monthly payment so they pick the 30-year fixed loan for the loan on their house